Hey guys, it's Matt Haycox here, and if you've been watching any of these interviews lately, you're about to see me do my third interview with a tennis player. I've got Wayne Ferreira with me today, who's a former South African tennis player. He had 15 men's, men's singles titles, 11 men's double titles, and he peaked at number six in the world. Retired in 2004, and since then has gone into a career career in business and, and also coaching other players. So we've got loads of lessons that we're going to be able to learn from him today. Wayne, thanks a lot for being with us. Yeah, great. Thanks, man. Obviously, I gave a little little bit of an introduction yeah. to you there, but can, can, can you flesh it out for me? Can you know, take us back to the beginning, and uh, how did it all begin for you? Yeah, I mean, I started playing tennis when I was about six or seven years old, uh, along with cricket and soccer, badminton. A lot of different sports. Um, I really enjoyed the, the competition part of it and when I was about 13 I decided to, to make that step where you have to kind of start picking one or the other. Decided to take tennis because I enjoyed more of the individual aspect of it. Um, you sort of just, you know, when you play a soccer match and you know, a game and you lose and you play out of your mind and, and you lose, it kind of was really disappointing for me. So I chose tennis which in the end ended up being a good choice. Uh, Played through the junior ranks, I was actually ended up number one in the world in doubles, number five in the junior ranks, and then went into the into the seniors. So yeah, and I had a had a successful career. What age did you turn pro? I actually left school when I was 16, went into the air force for two years, and from 16 to 18. So literally turned pro when I was 16. What did you do in the air force? Just had to do it. It was oh, it was mandatory mandatory at the time, um, it's not anymore. But it used to be back in the time. So. I decided with a bunch of other guys to go in at the same time, and you know we managed to play quite a lot of tennis while we were there. But oh, so did, did they have like Air Force tennis teams or something you, you could keep? We, we had a, ten, a tennis academy with guys in the military. I mean, there were some in the army, some in the Air Force, uh, some in the medics, and we all got together in the afternoons after work and practiced and had workouts and that. But basically, did our two years at, uh, at you know in a, wherever we were. Uh, did did you find did you find uh, that let's say the the discipline and and some of the things that was learnt in the air force ultim ultimately assisted your tennis when you came back to it or was it a distraction yeah. from being out of the game for two years? Really, only the basic training, six weeks basic training, was really the hard part where we had to put a lot of energy and focus into you know obviously the work that you do and everything. But after that, you know, I just worked in an office uh, for a sergeant major and wasn't really much behind that at all but uh, you know basic training was great I learned a lot and uh, you know you got to fight through the adversities of struggling um, so yeah in the end you know when I look back at it it was a, an amazing experience and then, so, so then um, when, did, when did the professional career start it's so about 89 uh, to, you know obviously turned pro when I was 16 but 89 went out um, you know first couple of years did really well Won my first event actually in '92, so I've been on the tour a few years. I won Queens, which was yeah, oh, that another first event you yeah, won. Yeah, yeah, which oh, was an amazing, amazing win for my first one out. And then through '92, played until 2004. So you know, it was a it was well actually from '89 to 2004. And how did you know it was time to finish? What was uh, what's happening? I was lucky in some ways, but also maybe not. I mean, I was very healthy through my career. Didn't have too many injuries in that, and and played a lot. And I feel like maybe I played too much and didn't really schedule that well. Towards the end in 2004, I, I had my first child was born in '99, and I spent the next five years on the tour. And being away from them was quite tough. And then uh, my second child, when my wife got pregnant in early 2000, well 2003, he was born in May 2004. I made a conscious decision to, to quit the game when he was born. Um, I felt like it was the right time. And I actually played through the US Open through September, quit and, uh, after that. And I just felt, you know, started to feel some injuries. Shoulder was hurting me a lot, uh, lost a lot of interest, um, enjoyed my time with my child. Second one coming along, wanted to be more around him and, and spend more energy with him. So I, I quit ma mainly for that reason. But uh, it was, a, in the end, a great decision for me. I, I have no regrets. I don't ever, ever have one day where I feel like I should have played longer. So it was a, it was a perfect timing for me. When, when your first child was born, how, were, you, were you married back yeah. then? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, did, did your wife and child you know, tr travel around at all with you? Or? Well, my wife traveled with me most of the time when we met, and we were together for a long time. And, but so she, you know, by that stage, she, had, she was kind of tired of the traveling. So no, she didn't. She moved. We moved to California. We lived in Paris while I was playing with her. and then. When he was born, we moved to California, close to her family. She's from California, and uh, she stayed at home. So that was a difficulty. 
you know, the good thing about it is it gave me a perspective of life that there were other things that were more important than just tennis. Um, but it was tough sometimes because when I played a tournament and things weren't going well, it was very easy for me to say, well, I'll, I can go home. So that made it also good and bad. But, uh, you know, she didn't travel a lot and I spent a lot of time away from him, which was tough. So for, for yourself or, or, or for, for other, other people you've, you've known out on the tour over the years, you know, how, how, much of, how much of an impact do you see either the, kind of the right or the wrong personal relationship you make on that? I mean, again, it's, you know, it's something I, you know, I see in business all the time where, you know, men or women who, who, who've, who've got in, instable you know, relationships mm -hmm. at home, you know, par partners who, who don't understand, the, I guess, the stress and all, and, and all, the, all the background that goes on you know, with, with running a business and growing a business yeah. and, and and you know ultimately for me that makes the the business person their job a hundred times harder and, and, and most of the time not achieve ultimately what they want, what they want to achieve but you, you know you almost imagine in sport it's it's even more uh, amplified and problematic you know you you're, you're about to walk on court for an mm -hmm. important game your your missus has sent you a shitty text message <laughs> you know, how, how 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 does that affect you guys I was very fortunate I, I picked a wonderful lady she was she's been great we still married and, and she's fantastic, you know, and she was overly supportive. Uh, she helped me so much in the extent of pushing me to do well. She made me sort of get the right coaches, look at the right things that, that would help me, and she was always great that way, and I never had any issues with her at all, and she made it uh, really, really easy. But I kind of understand where you're talking about a little bit, you know, I, of 2007 I started a company that, uh, that I wanted to do and I brought in a business partner and, and I made that mistake of bringing in the wrong person and uh, it, it was tough and I could see what you're talking about. I had some friends who had bad relationships in the tennis and I had a, a, a bad relationship with my business partner and it makes life extremely difficult to be able to succeed and to achieve your goals of what it is that you set out to do uh, if you have somebody like that. So it, it, it's detrimental. What, 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 was, what was the business you were involved in? I started a water company. We, we built a machine that made water out of the humidity in the air. Oh. And we had a, a business in the US. How, how did you come up with that idea? I always liked the technology. I saw it many, many years ago. I, I was wanted to do a project in South Africa, but decided rather just to build the company. We had our offices in, in the US. We had a factory in China. Um, and decided to start selling worldwide. We, we sold in about 20 different countries um, and it grew really nicely and it, the conceptually it's a, it's a wonderful idea and, and I think something for the future that will be around a lot because we're really lacking and, and losing out on water and the atmosphere at this stage is really the only place that has uh, water available for us and nobody is really harnessing that, uh, you know, that out of it. So you know, I think it, it's, yeah, you will see a lot more of it in the years to come. Um, but it was a, it was a good experience. I learned a lot. It's completely different than playing tennis in many different ways. Tennis is a very selfish sport where you you really think about yourself. You do whatever you want. But when you run a business and you have employees, and you got to manage them, um, and you have to also in business rely on people that you're working with. And if they don't, you know, when you play tennis, you you go play a tennis match. You have a result. Uh, it, that each day you have a result at the end of the week, you move on to the next one. In, in business I found it very difficult because things were always drawn out very long. You always had to wait for other people to give you answers and results and it was frustrating because I didn't get, I didn't get that resolution as quickly as I would have liked to. So it was a, it was a good learning and, trans, and turning it around and, and uh, learning a lot about, about business. And tell me, uh, when, when you when you experienced you know, failures in business and you know, you know, large scale failures, how how would you compare those to to, to losses in sport? And, and this is only something I've been I've been considering I, I, literally over the last few weeks. I've, I've been re reading some articles about MMA fighters actually. And, I mean, I don't know how much you know about you know, my background, but I guess my, my story to the you know, to, to to the business advice we give here and, 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 and any coaching and stuff I do in general is 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 from all from personal experience. And, and, and you know, I, I started to build some very successful businesses very young, uh, and then you know, in the in the financial crash of 2008, I was I was naive, I was overgeared, I was you know, let's say a, um, a, an, an aggressive young guy, went spectacular, absolutely spectacularly bankrupt, and uh, and, and I guess you know, I've, I've been uh, fortunate and 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 also you know, planned enough to rebuild. But when, when we talk about failures in business, that the, they're normally discussed on such a catastrophic scale. Mm. And I was reading recently about uh, you know, um, 
how the, um, a business coach was comparing uh, the, the losses of an MMA fighter to to, um, to bankruptcy or downfalls in business, and uh, and and say, so, you know, if every time this fighter lost a fight, and say, so, well, that's it, I'm gonna, you know, I'm putting putting my shorts away, and I'm, I'm never I'm never coming back again. You know, how would Conor Conor McGregor have ever been created, or or these people? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it kind of start, it started to open my eyes a bit to, to, to the comparables there. But would I mean would you say would you say a a major loss in business or a bankruptcy in business is is akin to you know lo losing a losing a Grand Slam final or something like that or or or, 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 do, or do you think there's still um, they're, they're still quite far removed? Does, yeah, does that make sense? That question? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But I think it's difficult to really do that because some sports are different than others. I mean, we play tennis every week. We have four Grand Slams a year, and you play for you know, I played fifty-six Grand Slams in a row, so I had fifty-six opportunities. I think they come around fairly quick. You know, if you take maybe an Olympic swimmer or Olympic runner, where their focus is mainly just on the Olympics, and it's every four years, that might be a little bit closer related because they spent four years Preparing. working their ass to get to that level to, to peak at that particular event. And business is the same. You know, you build it up. You get want to get to a stage where you hit success at a certain level, and maybe you get to that level and you crash and burn. And then you know, do I wait another four years? Do I put that energy in? Do I fight again? Do I do it or do I just walk away? And tennis is not, not really like that because you know you, you can lose a Grand Slam final uh, in Australia. You have you know six months till the next one, and then you have a month to the next one, and then a couple months to the one after that. So, and I guess even in between the Grand Slams, you, you've got your Masters or or, or, yeah. or, or, or or your other tournaments, which are which are not uh, you know, are not too far behind those anyway. Yeah, business. You know, t tennis is quite interesting too because you know. You, you can't be a perfectionist, you can't win every match and if you expect to, you, sh you, can, you can't play the game and you have to fight each day. I mean, you know, I play, given, I always give kids the, the, the perfect example of say I play uh, 20 tournaments in a year, played for 16 years, I won 15 events. So basically I was just less than one, one time a year was I a winner. So every week that I left of those 20 weeks, I was a loser. And um, you know you have to look at it as as success by being uh, by winning more than losing percentages. And you know it, it's it's a different perspective. You you can't win. You get used to losing. You know business can be like that too. You know you work on a project. You 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 spend a long time and a lot of energy getting it, and then finally in the end it it fades away. And it's important for you to rebound, look for the next project. Work on it again and hope for that one success. And but uh, and I guess you know, like tennis, you know, the the the, um, the parallels are, you know, yes, in those tw in those twenty weeks you've had those losses, but 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 for, you know, from each of those losses, you know, you, you've you've learnt learnt your lessons, you, you know, you, you've you've improved your game, you've you know, you've you've fixed strokes, and and and, and that is what is exactly the same with business. Sure. In, in, in that you know, as as long as as long as you are learning from each of these failures and and hope you are not repeating them again and you know, applying them to something else, then you know, the, 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 they're not losses. You know, it's just it's just kind of continual growth you know, to, to, to the next Grand Slam. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you always have to learn from your losses. You have to learn and try to build. And then also when you have success, try to you know, see what made that success. And yeah, I mean, you can, you can relate to a certain degree uh, with that because, I mean, everything that you do, it's a hard work that you put in and you hope for success, but you never always guarantee it. But, you know, like, you know, like most people say, the, the harder you try and the more effort you put in, the better opportunity you have of succeeding. I mean, just then you were saying you know, you've got to learn, learn from interview failures, and this is something I was talking about uh, with uh, with Barbara Shett last week actually in Manchester, saying that you know I always say that uh, you know you only ever learn anything from your failures, ne never from your successes, because it, when you look back at a failure or or, or, or a loss, it is it is easy to piece together what went wrong and, and change it to make sure it happened again. Whereas when something goes right, it's just kind of well, it went you know it went right. You know yeah. I, I I can't dissect it as easily. You know would, would you would you would you say the same with the sport? Yeah, I definitely think so. I definitely think. Uh, I mean, you know, learning the the losses and learning from that is gains you the, the best experience. And I think that's. I think you're 100 percent key. It definitely uh, is similar and, and the same. So talk to me about coaching. You've uh, you, you've you've, re you've recently started co co coaching Chilich. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that have you have you coached before or is this? Um, I've, I've been in a different coaching role. I've I've I helped a young boy, Mackenzie McDonald, who's out on the tour. He's ranked about seventy. I helped him from when he was eleven to eighteen, okay. um, develop his game. And then the last three years, I've been coaching my son, who's gone to college. 
this is my first sort of run at a, at a professional player, and uh, you know it's been good. I I like the fact that uh, Marin is very open-minded to change. He's also like what we talk about, looking to get better, and he's you know you know looking at things that haven't worked for him and try to build. And it's been good. You know, it's a little different when you when you're putting all of your energies into somebody else. Uh, but I think I learned a lot from business uh, to be able to transcend into into coaching and. It's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm very excited to help him. Um, I think he's got opportunities to get back to where he was, and that. So for me, there's that incentive to to ha have him have success, to to you know feel that I I was you know helping him out get there. It's it's, it's interesting that you say you know he, he wants to learn, he, want, he wants to get better. I mean, it was one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about with coaching was um, you know, from from a business perspective. You know, it's something I talk a lot about, and one of my pet hates is I think I think you know, particularly in the in the UK we are um, we're, we're very arrogant and closed minded to you know to, to to a coaching and an improvement mentality in business. You know, not 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 in sport, but you know in business. I think okay, it's becoming a bit more fashionable now, if you like. And, and it's, it's, it's certainly prevalent in the US, but, but for me, people in UK business, there's no, they, they don't look at it as, as, as growth. It's, it's, I'm either in business or I'm out of business, you know, and whether, whether you're a one man band who's just started a business yesterday or you're 30 years deep with a, you know, with a thousand employee international corporation, you know, pe pe people, there's this kind of almost like arrogance and, and it's, it's like, you know, you can't admit that you, need, that you need to learn anything in business, which obviously makes absolutely no sense when you compare that to sport and you, you look at all the top sporting people who, who it's completely expected and commonplace that they're surrounded by coaches you know, they're surrounded by teams of people to, you know, to continually improve them mm -hmm. I mean how you know, but when you're at the top of the sporting game do you, do you still find people who are who are not open to being coached who are I'm, I'm world number one number two whatever you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't need anything yeah unfortunately I mean those are the ones that always get to a level and never improve I mean we have to mention any names in that, but over the years I've seen many of them that have had coaches who have really been, you know, hitting their head against the wall because they know that they can help them, but every time they talk to them, the player thinks that they know best. And uh, it's, it's, I don't think you can be successful that way. I think you have to be open-minded, you have to want to learn, you have to listen to other people, you have to take it. Now, you can always do two ways too. I mean, I think it's important for you to listen to the person that's telling to you, telling whatever they're telling to you, and then you assess it yourself and feel that if it makes any value or not. But you have to be open-minded to learn. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. That, that's super. But you, you, you've got to, you know, you've got to have the, let's say the, the self-awareness and, and, and the depth, depth of understanding, standing to, t to take it away. But I think you know, yeah, if you if you if you're open-minded enough to to knowing that you know you you can be coached, you can learn yeah. more. There's you know there's so much to take from all you know from every area of life. And as I was saying to you before we started this, you know, this is this is why I, d I do these interviews. Yeah. And, you know, people initially watching them may may not see uh, an, an immediate. Pattern parallel of you know oh well what, what you know what what's an ex tennis player and Matt talking about sport you know got, got to do with my small business or my you know future entrepreneurial career but I think you know if, if you can sit down and and and, and watch you know watch a, an interview or a speech or or you know enjoy a conversation with anyone who's an expert in their game you know whether whether it's sport whether it's acting comedy business you know there's there's so many parallel areas of everything in life that if that if you can absorb one sentence or one paragraph that you know that, that's you know relative to you and your situation and you, and you can put into context that then you know, then you know overnight you know you can really really take yourself to the next level no 100% i mean i think one thing that was worked really well for me moving from sport into business was is the the fight you know being able to break through that pain barrier of things not going well and persisting and, and trying and keep trying and keep trying to, to get to where you're going because I mean you know there's a lot of energy in sport and business to succeed and may not be physical in business it's more mental and where tennis is a little bit more physical on the work and everything but if you fight hard and you continue and you trust yourself and you just you know believe that you can do it you know a lot of times people just give up too early you give up too soon and uh, they want to walk away but I think if you fight hard in anything that you do you, you, you create yourself an opportunity to have success. So what's next for Wayne Ferreira? Well, I'm going to be travelling with Marion through through Wimbledon and the US Open. How, how long's how long's your uh, contract for? Through, well, just for, it's supposed to be a trial period. We're going to go through the US Open in August, and uh, we'll see see where it goes from there. I'm I'm very positive. I think uh, I'll be able to help him a lot, and I'm hopefully that you know it'll it'll 
go a lot further than that. I'm very fortunate, you know, to start with somebody who I really like. I think he's a great guy. Uh, like I said, he's open-minded to learn, and he's been a lot of fun to be around. And you know, it's uh, it's always nice to ba basically help somebody who wants to be helped. Cool. Well, listen, I'll be at Wimbledon, so I'll be uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you there and seeing your results it. in action. Thanks a lot for joining us today, and uh, it's been great to chat. Thanks, mate. Appreciate Cheers, it. Wayne. Thanks, mate. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Hi, this is Wayne Ferreira. I've just been uh, hanging out with Matt Haycox talking about sport, business, and just life in general. You gotta go to YouTube, check it out.